I'm here at London's Heathrow to take a look at Virgin Atlantic's brand new A350 airliner. It promises a lot of improvements in terms of comfort and style, whether you're in upper class, premium economy or economy. First stop is the club suite, let's go. The luxurious experience for upper class passengers first begins with Virgin Atlantic's famous club suite. The passenger lounge boasts a number of complimentary facilities, including a hairdresser's, a spa and two separate bars. This is in addition to a sit-down table service restaurant. You can have free food and drinks seated anywhere in the lounge. The first sight that greets you when stepping on to the brand new A350 is the new loft space where upper class passengers can socialise. This replaces the infamous bar on Virgin's older A340 aircraft, but crucially it now seats more people and has seat belts. This means that you can stay in the loft during turbulence. Walking into the cabin, you're struck by an impressively high ceiling. This gives the whole aircraft a more airy feel. This is all down to the lightweight composite fuselage which the aircraft is made from. Not only does this give more room on the inside, but also makes the aircraft lighter and more fuel efficient. I'm keeping on at the end, thank you. Cheers. The upper class seat is ultimately breathtaking. Considering this was my first flight in business class, the first thing that struck me is the inability to see any other person when sat down in your seat. For me, this was completely new, having only ever traveled in an economy where you'd be lucky if you weren't touching the person next to you, yet alone have them in your eye line. Due to a very busy afternoon, we were stuck on the tarmac at Heathrow for about 20 minutes, but we were soon in the air flying over London, making our way to JFK in New York. first thing that you notice is the lack of ear popping on this aircraft. Um, the A350 has the technology where it synchronizes the cabin pressure to around 6,000 feet and that means that your ears don't have to adjust to such a high, crazy high altitude. It means less ear popping, a more comfortable flight and especially it's a big deal if you've got a young one that is going through this for the first time. The in-flight entertainment of the IFE system has been pretty decent. You get this cool swivel layout like screen. They call like the TV selection, um, they call it Vera, which to me sounds a bit weird. It sounds like a person, like 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 a nan, like an old lady. It's a it's a decent system. It's touch screen, which is quite cool. Um, you've got this great tail cam view. It's HD, which is better than a lot of the competitors, which is really cool. You know, you get to see in crystal clear the the runway fall away from the plane. The only issue with it is, is that the resolution of the content that you're watching, so I watched an Apollo 11 documentary, the resolution felt really low res. And for a plane and for a service at upper class where, you know, the, the, the differences in the details, it felt somewhat lacking that you couldn't have a crisp HD feed, especially when the screens, the touch screens are actually really, really good. The food was fantastic. I'd absolutely give it um, top marks all round. I started off with a prawn salad that seemed to have like a watermelon and strawberry chili kind of relish underneath with a bit of tomato in. Um, that salsa was really, really nice. For me, and I opted for the chicken pie. This was delicious. It was it was full of flavour. Um, the gravy was really good. Probably not enough for my taste. But I'm sure they probably would do some more if you asked. Dessert uh, finished off with a beautiful little chocolate uh, kind of firm cheesecake type thing. Again, it was really cold, which made the little white chocolate pendant really really tough to dig into. Um, it was not easy, but uh, when it was in the mouth, it was tasted great. And up here at 40,000 feet, it's not easy um, to make everything taste as good as it did. And you get real mugs of tea. In terms of seat, it is pretty comfortable. It's not like a super padded seat where you're gonna fall into it. Um, I did not have the bed set up 
um, in a full flat configuration during this flight. There's plenty of controls, you can go forwards, you can go backwards, you can um, recline yourself, which I did to have a little nap earlier. Um, and it allows you to put your feet in this footwell in front of you. Economy class has had an upgrade too. At the rear of the plane, old blocky seats had been replaced with a new super thin chair, the likes of which you might have seen on Budget Airlines. Now you might think you could feel every bump and kick of the child behind you. However, they do equal out into more leg room for taller passengers. It's a tough trade-off, but overall these seats are pretty good and they have an adjustable six-point headrest. Virgin Atlantic's VP of Consumer, Daniel Kirzner, told me that they've put some time in updating the whole cabin, right the way through from upper class to economy. Fun fact, the 11.5 inch IFE screen in economy is actually larger than the screens that they have in upper class on some of their older fleet. If you're paying upwards of £5,000 per ticket, this is a fantastic way to fly. Everything from uh, when we first got collected by the drivers was fantastic. Everything in the clubhouse was brilliant. Um, but for me, like, this is my first time in upper class. I could not justify spending five grand on this experience. It is incredible. That's, a, that's really hard earned money. If that 5,000 pounds came very easy to me, then uh, I might feel differently. All in all, it was a fantastic experience. And if you're in upper class, the Virgin A350 is the Rolls Royce of flying, and you'll absolutely love the experience. But economy passengers will also be pleased with a fully updated cabin, a few inches more legroom, and the exact same in flight entertainment, no matter which part of the plane you are sitting in. Did you like this flight report style video? Please head to the comments below and let us know what you thought.